Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. My name is Ariba Shabbir and we have been learning English language teaching. Today we are starting with a new module and this module is structures of English language. In this module we will cover different sessions. The first one would be based on a phonology. The second uh, topic that we will cover will be uh, morphology and then we will discuss syntax and semantics. Later on, we will understand the context in a language. So, uh, as you see that the first topic that we are going to cover today is the structures of the English language and it is phonology. Uh, before we proceed further, let us recapitulate of what we did in the last session. So, in the last session, we studied modern English, uh, middle English and we also looked upon uh, the uh, uh, early English uh, that was known as Old English and uh, if we look up at the modern English, it is widely considered to be the lingua franca of the world and we also studied that English has the flexibility of function and openness of vocabulary like uh, a word can be used as noun and the same word can also function as verb. We had taken examples like uh, uh, an object is on the table, tabling a plan. So, here you understood that table can be used uh, with different functions. Similarly, we understood the concept of world Englishes uh, which uh, emerged uh, as uh, which emerged in various contexts and it came out from different parts of the world. We also understood the concept of general Indian English which emerged when most of the Indians strongly formed linguistic habits while attempting to learn English and we found that received pronunciation uh, which is also called as RP uh, was traditionally considered as a standard form of English. However, with the emergence of several dialects we, we, we prefer to use uh, uh, you, you, uh, we, we prefer to use our language uh, and the pronunciation in a way we uh, find feasible. And we also studied that it is a minor dialect and it is being spoken by no more than 5 percent of the uh, uh, population which is in the uh, south east of uh, England. After studying phonology as I discussed in the beginning, you will be able to understand the difference between letters and sounds. You will also be able to learn the conceptual framework of consonant and vowels and their place and manner of articulation. In addition to these things, you will be able to apply general understanding of phonology, phon phonetics to understand the second language learners and apply these concepts to language education and learning. So, dear learners, it is important to understand that how letters emerge in English language and how they are different from sounds. So, let us take the example from our childhood days when we started learning English as a second language. Uh, I am sure your teacher gave you uh, alphabet and uh, he or she might have asked you to memorize it. You had gone through the series of letters uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But then what happened that when you started using those letters in composing words, you found lot of differences. In fact, you found lot of things which are being used in one way and in the different case you used in a different way. Uh, way. So, let us take the examples of those words where you found difficulties or your copies might have got read due to the spelling mistakes. Uh, Let us take up the example of a word chair. Okay. Look up at this word and you know when you write chair, you see there are, uh, uh, there are different letters 
right? The first letter is C, the second letter is H, the third letter is A, the fourth letter is I and the fifth letter is A. Surprisingly, you are combining two letters in order to produce a sound ch, ch, right? And you uh, write uh, uh, two letters in order to give this sound. However, in the word like kite, you are not combining those two letters C and H. Rather, you are putting one letter which is denoting K sound. So, if you compare these two sounds, you will find that as such there is no difference in pronunciation. There is no difference in articulation, right? But the way of writ writing is different. Similarly, you can take up different examples like when you write chorus, you will gradually realize that in the example chair, ch is used to produce a ch sound. However, in the word like kite, k is used, a k, letter k is used to produce k sound and in the word chorus, ch again is used but it is now producing a very different sound. So, you see a lot of discrepancy with respect to spellings in English language and I am sure you can uh, come up uh, with different examples, you can recall all those words which are confusing and you found difficulty in understanding. Let us take up other examples as well. Uh, you, you wrote station, right? Now, what happens in the word station that you use S, you use T, I am talking about letters here, you also use A and then you talked about T, then you mention I and then you mention O followed by N. Now, think of this word and try to analyze that where have you used the combination of two letters in order to produce a very different sound. So, let us take up this example T I, fine and in this T I you find that it is no more T I, it is rather being produced as sh, sh, sh sound, right. So, station in the same way you produce nation, you say combination. So, what is happening over here? You are putting two letters, combining uh, those two letters and producing a very different sound. Uh, if ti is going to present uh, uh, itself as sha sound, then what will happen to the combination of letters that are being produced with s and h sounds? So, let us say when you write fish, what happens here? Here you use f, you use i, you use s and you use h. Now, here you are combining s and h letter to produce sha sound. Sh, sh. Uh, in English language, you can find number of examples that have been taking place. So, it is important to understand here that it is not necessary that all the letters are uh, giving the exact uh, articulation, they are giving the exact sound that we have been requiring. Sometimes they are coming up with the infusion of two letters, sometimes one letter is producing the sound and sometimes you know the entire different aspect, the entire different combination which we have not even imagined of is coming up with a same sound. So, you know you have to look up at the cures that has been taking place and uh, you know it is important to uh, find out the reason behind this cures and also the solution so that we can learn English in a better way and it is not just English, it could be any other language as well. So, understanding sound and understanding letters and the difference between these two components and how they are going to interrelate with each other are important to go through it. Let me give you another example. Uh, you might have studied in your uh, kindergarten that there are five vowels A, E, I, O, U. Let me write it down over here. A, E, I, O, U. Now, think of the usage of the language. Think of the uh, words that you have used these vowels in so many ways. And I am sure you would have found discrepancy. I am sure you would have found that vowels are not just consigned to these 
five in number rather they are much much more so if you have difficulty in understanding this concept let me tell you that uh, 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 you say uh, uh, feet right i'm writing over here feet so look up at the uh, uh, sounds over here here you are using the sound f right and here you are using the sound t and in between it is not just e it is e so it's basically a longer vowel so it is important to distinguish that sometimes we use shorter e and sometimes we use the longer e similarly the case uh, happens with u wall uh, uh, as well you say u and then you say u so there is a difference between the shorter one and the longer one and we can take other examples as in the word apple so while pronouncing apple you uh, first come up with the expansion of your mouth and you say a sound in order to produce apple but what would happen in the word like come in between uh, in, in the wall that comes in between the k and the m sound you find it is neither a sound it is neither a sound it is a a sound so it is uh, uh, it is evident here that vowels are not just confined to five in number rather they are more how many are these uh, in number and uh, what are their characteristics that we will take up in the later uh, part of this session so far uh, you have understood that letters and sounds are uh, different from each other and uh, you have also understood that it is not necessary that all the letters are producing the exact sound some may and some may not so there uh, were researchers who uh, had gone through this problem and they spent nights and days to find out the alternative as a result we saw a uh, daniel jones who came up with the idea of introducing sounds through international phonetic association so we will talk about uh, ipa and how the symbols uh, came up uh, uh, in the later part but before that let us quickly revise the definition of phonology that we are going to discuss the study of sounds in a particular language or in languages generally since you have got the idea of how sounds are produced and how they are different from letters so now let us separate this study and make sounds uh, uh, a very different and a uh, isolated entity so here we are going to study the sounds um, uh, of a language with reference to english a uh, quickly we will go through the merriam webster's dictionary which defines phonetics as a system of speech sounds of a language or a group of languages surprisingly and in fact interestingly as well it is not that uh, you know phonetics is consigned with english language rather it is expanded to other languages as well even you can just hear chinese and you don't understand it but you are able to decode it by uh, uh, you are able to decode it with the help of international phonetic association uh, international phonetic alphabet right you can just transcribe it you can exactly decode the sounds and can come up with a script this is an interesting thing of uh, the ipa which daniel jones introduced in the academia one important aspect that was mentioned by merriam webster was uh, uh, the study and systematic classification of the sounds since we are going to categorize we are going to classify we are going to understand uh, their features we are going to um, go through uh, the place and the manner of uh, articulation therefore it is the systematic study of all these aspects and uh, uh, we will also study uh, that um, uh, as mentioned by merriam webster's dictionary that uh, the practical application of this science to language study so it will no more be a problem of chaos rather all the problems with regard to spellings with regard to pronunciation will be sort out one more thing that uh, uh, that i would like to discuss over here is because we will be gradually discussing and talking about phoneme so phoneme is 
uh, is defined as uh, any of the abstract units of the phonetic system of a language that correspond to a set of similar speech sounds right so example as i have mentioned over here is p b k it is not p and b e and k it is uh, rather sound p and b and k right so what happens uh, like you say plant or i if i have to give you uh, an easier uh, uh, word i would say uh, pet right so what happens in pet what are the phonemes p is the phoneme and the t is the phoneme these phonemes are the abstract units of the entire system right and you also see that the uh, a is also mentioned over here let's take up the example of a uh, bat right so in the word bat you see phoneme b and you see phoneme t right you see uh, a as well okay now it is being mentioned as as per the ipa it should be mentioned as b and the a sound is denoted with this symbol and then t is being put over here like this right and uh, now what happens in allophone it is being defined as one of two or more variants of the same phoneme for example you say uh, please okay so what happen in uh, what happens in please you are uh, slightly putting up an aspiration now what is aspiration that when it is put with a little uh, force for example you say please please so it is coming at the first place so the first pa which is the uh, which is the start of the syllable is being put up with aspiration however when this pa comes in between the word in between the syllable then it is no more aspirated it you would say spin spin you won't say spin that would not suit the rhythm of the language now let us in order to understand the articulation system and how our uh, articulatory organs are involved it is important to look up at the diagram look up at this uh, diagram you will see that lungs are responsible for producing speech sounds how are they responsible let me tell you that when you inhale here and exhale here so you know the it the air comes out from your mouth and that's how you give up a sound if there were no air i'm sure you would have not been able to produce any sound so lungs come up as an important and uh, uh, essential organ of uh, articulatory system right then i would like to talk about larynx uh inside the larynx i'm sure uh, you can in in vernacular language we say adam's apple so you will find it uh, uh, on your neck and uh, you can touch it and feel it as well so what happens in larynx that uh, you know the air passes through it and inside the larynx you have vocal folds also called called as vocal cords so when the air which is being exhaled from the lungs passes through the larynx and your vocal cords are set on vibration sometimes the vibration are heavier to the extent that you feel it and sometimes the vibrations are least or they are partial as well so as denoted in the as as shown in the diagram vocal uh, folds are um, inside the larynx and they are being put to vibrate when the air is released from the lungs uh, you will come up with uh, the roof of your mouth now let's understand the roof of the mouth so first uh, let me say that you have teeth and behind your teeth there is an area which is called alveolar ridge right and after the alveolar ridge you find something very hard if you touch the tip of the tongue to the roof of the mouth just behind the alveolar ridge as also shown in the diagram you will see that there is hard palate right and hard palate is followed by soft palate which is also called as velum so alveo uh, teeth then you have alveolar ridge and then it is followed by hard palate it is further followed by soft palate which is called velum as well 
and velum plays a very important role when you produce sounds through your oral cavity and you also produce sounds through nasal cavity. We will try to understand how nasal cavity and oral cavity performs when you come up exhaling your ear and you know the air passes through your uh, vocal cords and you produce very distinguished sounds. There is an, uh, another organ that is called uvula. Right, so uvula uh, is useful when you produce sounds like ka, ka. So these uh, sounds may find, uh, can be found uh, in the languages of uh, India and uh, it is difficult, in fact it is impossible to find out uh, any uh, sound in English which has, uh, the, which has the usage of uvula. But yeah, it is important to understand as it can help you to understand your articulation, uh, articulatory system in a comprehensible way. Now when you talk about tongue, it is important to uh, understand that uh, your tongue first consists of the tip, okay. So when while producing different sounds, you bring the tip of the tongue to the different places of your mouth. You may touch uh, your tip to the alveolar ridge, you may touch uh, your tip to uh, the dental, the, the, the teeth part and you can also touch uh, the tip of the tongue with the hard palate and even soft palate and you can you know do lot of exercises and come up with different and distinguished sounds. And you know uh, after the tip of the tongue there is an area which is called blade of the tongue okay. So if you experiment your tongue the blade of the tongue with different uh, areas you will again see that uh, manner of articulation and the place of articulation would go with different uh, ways. Uh, fine, so uh, that's how oh, the rest of the tongue is and uh, you know tip and blade uh, is often uh, important when we talk about the place of articulation. Right, now when you talk about nose it means we are talking about nasal sounds. Okay, and you know when our oral cavity is blocked or it does not allow the air which is coming from the lungs to release, then the air finds its way from the nose and therefore we come up with the sounds that have nasal texture. For example, you produce sound ma, ma. So it finds the way, so when we talk about uh, the nasal cavity then the air is uh, stopped from uh, the mouth and uh, the same air finds its passage from the nose. Sometimes uh, what happens that uh, this particular air is being passed through both the passages nose and uh, mouth. We have uh, examples like m sound, we have a uh sound, we have n sound. So these are sounds which are important to look up, up uh, look up as far as nasal and nasalized sounds are concerned. Okay, so look up at this diagram again. Uh, larynx, uh, larynx are responsible in putting up your uh, uh, your sound, uh, in putting vibration in your sound. Lungs, which are responsible for inhaling and exhaling air. Uh, tongue, which uh, comes up in contact with different parts of uh, uh, of of the of your vocal tract and perform uh, important role in producing sound velum again which is also known as soft palate is also responsible in giving up different sounds we have nasal cave and uh, we have uh, you know okay we you have a jaw which keeps on moving uh, from time to time and also uh, lips are responsible for uh, for exhaling air in a sudden way or in a slow way. So we will go through uh, with the different functions in this session and we will try to understand these uh, uh, import the, the, the role of these articulatory organs in a detailed manner. So uh, since we have understood how our uh, oral cavity works. Let me tell you that sounds are also classified into uh, into two important uh, parts. F 
first is consonant and the second is vowel or you can say the first is vowel and the second is consonant. Now what are vowels, what are consonants? So let me begin with example, uh, you will find, uh, you, will, you will exhale your air, right? And you feel that there is some obstruction taking place, then definitely the sound which you are going to produce or which you have been producing is basically constant, consonant in nature. However, when there is no obstruction, when there is no constraint and the air which you are exhaling from your lungs come to your mouth and uh, is being released without any, uh, without any stop, then you say that it is a vowel. So that is what I have tried to present to you in a very comprehensible way. There are 24 consonants and 20 vowels if we look up at the uh, uh, sound system of English language. So if I ask you to recall or to remember or think of consonants, then what examples would you like to give? I would definitely like to put up the sounds like p, t, b, k, Okay, sure. Remember these uh, these symbols that I have been trying to put up over here is derived is is taken from IPA International Phonetic Association, and uh, IPA has uh, uh, designated uh, a symbol to uh, symbol for each sound. So similarly, you have the 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 sound which I am putting up here in this form. Uh, you have a sh sound as uh, denoted here. You have many more sounds as well, m sound, so a n sound, okay. So these all are consonants. If I ask you to come up uh, with examples of vowel sounds, then what would it be? Uh, I'll say a sound, which is being denoted like this, a, a sound, and then we have a sound, right? We also have a, a longer a sound and we can uh, talk about u sound. Then uh, in the vowel again we have the longer u which is being denoted with a diacritic. So when I am using two dots it means I am using a diacritic to denote that this particular sound is being put up for a longer time. Now here. Uh, this uh, you see and as you can see in this slide, this is the chart of the International Phonetic Alphabet which was revised to 2005 and uh, it represents consonant sounds. So let us quickly go through uh, some of the examples of uh, the consonant sounds. Here we have P sound, B sound, T sound, D sound, right, M sound, A sound and uh, you have you know a y sound and j sound j sound so there is a difference uh, when you talk about these uh, sounds let's say uh, j sound as in the word jug jug j uh, you also uh, have observed that uh, this j is slightly produced uh, with a friction and you come up with the saying j, j, j sound as in the word like uh, vision, vision. So it is important to distinguish that it is not vision, it is vision and j is being differentiated from the sound j. In this uh, for a chart you see k sound, g sound, a sound, r sound, sh sound, v sound, v sound. Okay, uh, and so on. So you will find uh, uh, different types of consonants and you will see that on the left hand side, it is written plosive, nasal, trill, flap, uh, fricative, lateral fricative, approximant, lateral, approximant, which uh, talks about the manner of articulation. And if you see this chart in a horizontal way, you will find that uh, it is written bilabial, labiodental, de dental, alveolar, post alveolar, retroflex, palatal, velar, uvular, pharyngeal, glottal. Okay. 
now uh, these bilabial labiodental all the you know technical words that you have been hearing uh, are basically denoting the manner of articulation and i am going to talk about the manner and the place of articulation in the next slide so now we will talk about the place of articulation of consonants so you will encounter that there are sounds which are considered bilabial so what happens in bilabial that you release you you try to release the air but there is a blockage there is a closure so which organs are involved in uh, closing uh, uh, your uh, articulatory uh, organs so those are lips so lips are responsible in uh, restricting the air which is coming out from your lungs if you try to uh, produce pa sound so you will see that your upper lip and the lower lip is coming in contact with each other and as a result uh, the air is being obstructed it is being stopped for a while and then you suddenly explode it to produce the sound now uh, in the second one you see labiodental labiodental means that there are sounds which are articulated with lower lip touching the upper front teeth so uh, you know your lower lip raises towards the upper front uh, teeth and then you uh, find that there is uh, an obstruction taking place when you uh, separate both the uh, both the organs then you realize that the air is being further released and you result in producing sounds like f and then you produce sounds like f okay so while pronouncing f you see that your lower lip goes uh, towards uh, the teeth and it touches it right it's in a way that it is obstructing the air and uh, uh, the articulation takes place similarly you can come up with other examples as well w w w so what happens in w sound that again the lower lip is coming in contact with the uh, front uh, teeth and resulting in the production of this sound now dental what happens in the dental sound that uh, uh, you know uh, tongue plays an important role over here and the upper te teeth is also involved in the production of this sound right so it basically blocks the passage and you result in producing the sound like ta 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 da da ta so uh, if you realize the articulation in a uh, uh, if you realize the articulation you will find that ta uh, that while pronouncing ta you are involving your tongue the tip of the tongue and you are also touching the tip of the tongue with the dental area with the teeth of your mouth with the uh, you are touching the tip of the tongue with the upper teeth and therefore you are coming up with the sounds like ta 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 you can also repeat after me da 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 so the tip which is at the point of your tongue touches the upper teeth and results in producing ta 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 and da 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 sa coming up with the next place of articulation which is uh, indicated here as alveolar alveolar sound so in alveolar what happens that tongue come close to the alveolar ridge okay which is the back of the teeth and it is uh, the area which lies uh, which connects the teeth with the mass right so you touch that area and you produce the sound okay like you say ta ta da da uh while producing these consonant sounds you feel that the blade of your tongue touches the roof of the mouth now what uh, is the roof over here it is the hard palate which comes right uh, before the alveolar ridge so you can try after me and produce sounds like ch 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 
j j and j but this j is different from ch ch j fine so i'm denoting here with the ipa symbol ch okay uh, uh j sh okay sh sh as i have already uh, put it over here fine now we will also uh, now let's understand what re retroflex sounds do it's very interesting retroflex uh, is uh, involves the tip of the tongue in such a way that while pronouncing it uh, starts rolling so let's say r so what happens that your tongue comes in front and then it rolls as a result you produce sound r fine so this is retroflex in english r is the example that we can take up over here now coming up with the palatal palatal a place of articulation so in palatal sound uh, there is an involvement of blade or front uh, of uh, uh, the tongue with the hard palate and you produce sound like ya ya it is important to note over here is that while pronouncing ya ya as in the word like yes you are not uh, you are not um, so uh, what happens in the ya 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 sound as in the word yes so what you do you bring two articulatory organs together and those are uh, the uh, the tongue and the uh, 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 soft palate and and the area between the soft and the hard palate yeah and you try to bring close but you are not fully obstructing the area as a result the air which is coming from your lungs find difficulty in passing through and therefore you result uh, you you come up with producing a very distinguished sound and that is ya ya you can repeat after me as well what happens in velar sounds so in velar as i told you in the beginning as well velar or velum uh, is a velum is a organ which is also known as soft palate so uh, uh, you know when you go back Uh, in your vocal tract you will find that after the hard palate there is another area which is soft and it is velum it is soft palate so many sounds are being produced when you raise the uh, uh, when you raise the velum and when you lower the velum so velar sounds uh, involve the back of the tongue uh, raising uh, or touching the soft palate in the word like k k k so you see that it is not the hard palate which is involved and it is neither the teeth nor the alveolar ridge rather your tongue approaches to soft palate now after understanding the place of articulation it is also important to understand the manner of articulation which is involved in producing distinguished sounds okay so let's look up at this slide and find that what does stop means a uh, stop are basically uh, known as plosive and in plosive or in stop uh, uh, you uh, realize that there is the closure of the articulatory organs to obstruct the air stream so the air is passing you know the passage is being created fine so what happens that the air is completely stopped at that point of time you say that the manner of articulation is stop or it is plosive you suddenly open those articulatory organs or separate it in order to produce those uh, sounds now we can take the example of fricatives also in fricative what happens that the sound in fricatives what happens that uh, the articulatory organs are close to closure are close to stop but they are not really closed so when you produce sounds like f f or when you produce a sound like w w w then what happens that you try to bring two articulatory organs 
together but you are not fully blocking those uh, uh, fully blocking the space you are not fully blocking the passage as a result the air passes through uh, the uh, area and uh, produce uh, and come up with a sound so you can also try uh, pronouncing uh, th 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 sound and th 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 sound right you can also try uh, articulating z z what happens while pronouncing z sound you are bringing uh, you know two articulatory system uh, two articulatory organs but there is a passage which is very near to close closure which is close almost but not fully blocked now what happens in affricate that it begins with a stop but uh, it releases as a fricative so you can take up the example of sounds where uh, we say ch 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 so you you know you say that it is a stop first but then you also realize that when uh, this when it is separated so air is being closed and they are very much close to the closure uh, with uh, if I have to take up more examples of affricate, I would say with ja there comes ja, ja, okay, ja, ja, and ja and sha also, uh, which can be taken up as examples of affricate. Now coming up to the nasal nasal uh, as a manner of articulation, then it is interesting to know that it uh, finds. Uh, it actually provides uh, a passage to the air which is coming from the lungs and the passage which uh, uh, this manner provides is the uh, involvement includes the involvement of nose you know the air is blocked or you can say it is not allowed to come through nose rather it comes in nasal sounds what happens that uh, there is uh, uh, there is a release of air and uh, uh, there is a closure or you can say that the air is not allowed to pass through, uh, uh, through the oral cavity rather it finds the passage through the nose. So the examples that you can take up over here is m, m, m sound. You can also think of n, n, n sound and a uh sound as in the word like sing as in the word like um, ring okay so you are not pronouncing ma sound and also not producing na sound it is somehow the texture of uh, uh, the uh, you know nasal uh, uh, cavity then there is uh, another uh, manner of articulation that is known as liquid so what happens in liquid sounds that partial uh, closure takes place in the mouth resulting in a resonance so you know you can say la 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 in liquid sounds what happens that the articulatory system are trying to come in contact with uh, the other uh, uh, organ and uh, the the meeting take place but the air is not at all obstructed rather it is released through uh, through its way so the example that you can take up uh, uh, here is l l l sound r r r sound so art, uh, you know manner of articulation and uh, place of articulation are distinctive and they are important to learn different types of sounds when it comes to uh, international phonetic association then there is another important concept that has been placed in the manner of articulation is glide what happens glide is very much similar to a vowel but it is not a vowel uh, um, let's say yes when you say yes you will feel that uh, it is a partial consonant right so it is not come it doesn't come under the category of vowel but it it has a texture of consonants so i would say that glide uh, is uh, represents year 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 sound in the word like yes or you can say wuh, wuh, wuh in the word like wheat in the word like west uh, yes so these are glide uh, interestingly you will find that uh, while producing sounds 
uh, you can easily categorized uh, into voiced and uh, voiceless sounds. So, I will give you a small activity to do. Uh, you can place both of your hands on your ears and you can block your ears and produce s, s sound as in the word uh, suit. Okay. So, I will also do and you can repeat after me. Now, while uh, producing this sound, just think of your uh, articulation. Think of the vocal organs that are involved in producing s sound and think what changes are taking place when the air is being released uh, and a pressure is taking place in your mouth. Fine. And in the same way, try to produce z, z sound. Okay, so let's try this. Z. Now, after uh, articulating these two sounds, you will find a lot of difference. Can you think of that difference? What was the uh, what was the difference? Though the manner or you can say the place of articulation was same. It was the difference of being voiced and unvoiced sound. So, how do you understand um, a sound with respect to its nature of being voiced or unvoiced? Uh, if I have to you know alter this activity, I can uh, also ask you to put your two fingers on your vocal cords on your larynx voice box and say also say z sound. So, what you will feel that in the former sound there is no vibration. However, in the later sound you find that a heavy pressure in the form of vibration is taking place. Right. So, that is how we are classifying uh, uh, voiced sound and unvoiced sound. You can take up other examples also b, b, v and you can think of uh, T, t, t. You can also do the same experiment with other sounds like the, the, sh, sh, m, m, like this. And you can easily distinguish where your vocal cords are vibrating. I would not say that vocal cords are not completely, uh, uh, are not vibrating at all, but yeah, I would say at least they are in the position of least vibration. Since we have studied consonants uh, throughout this session, let us also think of vowels. So, what are the nature of vowels? Let me tell you that they are basically divided into round vowels and unrounded vowels. So, it is important to study vowels as well since we have gone and through uh, since we have studied uh, uh, consonants now it is important to throw light on vowel sounds as well. So, when we talk about vowels we cannot forget that they are being classified into rounded vowels and unrounded vowels. So, if you say uh, uh, oat right I am writing over here as well in this uh, slide when you say oat you see that your lips are being rounded in order to produce this rounded vowel while there are words uh, where you use vowels with uh, unrounded uh, manner so how can you do that for example you say come okay so do you say comb if you say comb then you will be able to realize that uh, in comb the vowel o is rounded rounded means that your upper and the lower lip gets rounded while uh, uh, while while articulate uh, while producing the sound but what happens in the word like come you are not rounding your vowels rather they become slim in such a way that you produce a sound a uh, in the word like come a uh, a uh, sound similarly when you say oat so you are rounding your lips and producing vowel uh, so, that is how we differentiate between rounded and unrounded vowels. Now, uh, in vowels there is one more category and this category comes in two forms. Some uh, scholars have put up uh, the third category triphthong, but here it is, but here let us focus on monophthong and diphthong. After knowing that what uh, is rounded and what is unrounded vowels, uh, 
it is important to uh, say in other words as well that uh, rounded valves include the circular, uh, 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 the uh, circular positioning of lips. However, in unrounded valves, there is a relaxation, uh, relaxation to the extent that you do not uh, round your lips and you produce it uh, uh, in a very easier way. Now, uh, we have also one more categorization that is monophthong and diphthong. Although many scholars have talked about triphthong, but here I think at this stage it is important to just go through uh, the monophthong and diphthong because these two concepts are important as far as Indian context is concerned. Uh, in monophthong, as you look, as you see in this uh, slide, in a monophthong there is the involvement of only one vowel. Okay, so there is involvement of only one vowel. If I have to take up the example of monophthong, I would say that uh, there is a word called put, right? There is a word called uh, boot. Okay, there is a word called food. Fine. So what happens in put? you are producing only one vowel sound. Okay. You are not mixing up two vowels and you are also not mixing up three vowels. It is just the one pure vowel that you are coming up. As you say put, it is this o sound which is uh, important to articulate over here. Similarly, if you come up with uh, uh, other sounds as in the word boot, you say that there is a very purity in pronouncing o sound. It does not encompass the involve, involvement of other vowels. You do not say boat. If you say boat, then the meaning would get different. But it is boot. So, it is oo sound without the interference of any other vowel and it is pure in nature and it is in continuation. Similarly, if you see the example of food, again there is involvement of only one vowel and there is no other vowel which is coming in between. So, when there is the involvement of only one vowel and uh, they are uh, mono in nature, then we say that this vowel is actually a monophthong. On the contrary, you see that they are diphthongs. So, what happens in diphthong as the name suggests di, di diphthong. So, di, di involves the involvement, involves two vowels. Right. So, in RP pronunciation, we pronounce uh, go as go. It is not go. In Indian, uh, in, in, in general Indian English, we say it is go. It is so because of uh, our articulatory system, which is habitual in pronouncing certain words um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very apt way. But let me tell you that in receipt pronunciation and I remember in the discussion as well, we talked about that it is so, so it is o and u, so and go like that way. Uh, if I have to take up a very prominent example of diphthong, I can say that you can think of cry. Okay, you can think of cry. Now, what happens in cry? You actually write k, you r, a, and i. Think of this. Uh, so, in this, uh, you know, see the transcription over here. Cry, cry. So, there is involvement of a and e, a and e. Cry, cry. It's not cra. It's not cre. It's cry. So, there is no consonant coming in between two vowels. The two vowels are uh, coming in continuation and the shift takes place from one vowel to the other and it becomes very interesting to pronounce cry. Similarly, you can take up the example of my, my. Again, in my, it, you, you, you pronounce ma sound, then there is a vowel a sound and there is another vowel which is. Uh, so, if I, if I ask you to think of uh, examples. Uh, when it comes to uh, diphthong, then what would you give? Uh, think of uh, words which have uh, the conjunction of two vowels and there is no interference of the consonant, of any consonant in between. So, let us take up the example of cry. Okay? So, what happens in cry? You will realize that there is a, uh, there is a sound of ka, then there is a sound of ra, 
then there is a sound of a uh, and then you take a shift and make it i that is e right so uh, a, a glide is taking place a shift is taking place r e two vowels are coming together and both the vowels are given uh, importance in this word right and similarly you can think of other examples like my my when you say my how would you write as uh, how would you how would you transcribe it or how would you represent it with international phonetic alphabet i would say that ma sound is coming then i would think of a sound and then again it is e sound uh, if you look up at these two sounds it means that two vowels are coming close in conjunction with each other supporting each other adjusting each other that you know both the vowels are giving their presence and you produce my 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 similarly you can think of the example lay 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 it's not lay it's lay lay so it's a and a lay so you know deep diphthongs basically refer uh, uh, ref, diphthongs refer to the concept of uh, the two vowels that come close to each other <coughs> in phonetic transcription uh, what happens that uh, we decode uh, we decode sounds we decode uh, uh, language with respect to its pronunciation and that's how we uh, uh, save it we uh, take it as an evidence so there is a procedure for that you need to learn ipa symbols i'll prescribe the book which is uh, quite prominent and popular uh, uh, let me give you example of how phonetic transcription takes place so i would say if you know uh, you are writing a word uh, let's say water so this water is uh, denoting uh, 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 five letters w a t e r but when you transcribe it you will see that w w w sound is being produced then you will see o sound is produced it is not a it's o so w w so o sound is being represented with this symbol and then you will realize that there is t t t sound which is being denoted as uh, with the symbol then there is not e and it is not a it is rather uh, a sound a very shorter one a sound and this is being denoted like this now uh, it is being said that a uh, that ra is being not pronounced so you won't say water rather you say water 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 so that's how the transcription of water takes place uh when you uh transcribe it you don't look up at its spelling rather you just look up how it is being pronounced so while pronouncing water we don't say water if had it uh, ra is re, had it uh, had ra been realized i would have mentioned ra but here ra is not realized that's why i'm omitting ra and just putting a sound making it water 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 right similarly you can take up other examples like color 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 so the spelling of color would be c o l o u r right but when you transcribe it you will see k k k then a a a then l l then a a color and again it's not color it's color 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 ra is not realized it is skipped and that's what phonetic transcription is all about so whatever you hear you denote it you write it you indicate it that's a crux of any transcription of any language not just english you can uh, transcribe chinese you can transcribe german french any of the indian languages you can do it very easily so this will help you to become better in learning and teaching language last uh, in the last let's quickly go through the concept of assimilation and elision 
it is uh, the integral concepts of uh, phonology uh, when we talk about as you see in the slide when you talk about assimilation we generally refer to the changing of a sound due to the uh, influence of the neighboring sound so uh, if i have to write an example i'll say hand back so how would you pronounce hand bag do you say hand bag or do you say hand bag hand bag so what i'm trying to the pitch that i'm trying to make over here is the da is not realized rather it gets influenced by its neighboring sounds right and it is no more uh, you know the cluster it is no more the combination of three consonants na da and ba one is skipped and therefore the two sounds are realized and you say hand bag hand back hand back fine uh, when it comes to elision let me tell you that uh, elision as indicated in the slide it is basically used to smooth the rhythm of the language and it ease the pronunciation of uh, words so um, if you say uh, what elision is i would say that certain sounds are being omitted i'll say certain sounds are being omitted so if you uh, pronounce word aspirin do you say aspirin or it's aspirin aspirin so i'm writing over here as well it's aspirin however the spelling of uh, uh, of this particular uh, word is aspirin right but this e sound is being omitted here so this is the process of elision even in the phrases also you say i don't know i don't know you know it gets shorter you say uh, chocolate or you say chocolate so this o sound which comes in between chocolate is no more in use rather it's choc late and further if i have to pronounce uh, transcribe it i would say please uh, repeat further i have to uh, transcribe it i would say um, ch o then k right then there is a diphthong lay lay and then t that's how it is being pronounced as it is no more chocolate it's chocolate right so you can come up with different examples it's no more mathematics it's mathematics right uh, it's no more temperature it's temperature right uh, um, uh, similarly i'm sure you can gather up many examples from your surroundings so dear learners uh in this session we have studied phonology and we have tried to understood that phonology is an important component of linguistics and it is an integral to language teaching and learning similarly we have understood that the aim of the phonology is to discover the principles uh, uh, like how a sound is produced how uh, a manner of articulation is involved uh, how uh, the obstructions take place how the air is released and what sounds to be produced when we experiment our articulatory systems with uh, different types of positioning right we have also gone through the glimpse of uh, uh, international phonetic alphabet alphabet which gives sounds and it is now easier to decode any language of the world and put up in a uh, in, 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 uh, put up in a system right and we have gone through the phonemic awareness and we have understood certain phonological skills if they are being practiced nicely and if they are being learned nicely then um, a learner is likely to become efficient in pronunciation so with this we have come to an end of this session to in the next session we will discuss morphology thank you very much